Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this lecture, we're going to be discussing microangiopathic hemolytic anemia. This is a very high yield lecture. This is definitely something you need to know for step one. So spend some time with this content because you will thank me later. With that being said, uh, on our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Mad Medicine, you can find all of our Hemonc videos for the step one exam. Just search Hemonc and you'll find a playlist with everything you need to know. And while you're there, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel because it'll really help us out. So with that being said, let's talk about normocytic anemias really quickly. Normocytic anemias are uh, anemias that are classified by an MCV that is normal, 80 to 100. That is a normal MCV. And as you can see with the photo, we have an arrow pointing to a normal size cell. Uh, they are subdivided based off of hemolysis. So you can have non-hemolytic and hemolytic anemias. And the hemolytic anemia that are subdivided based off of intrinsic and extrinsic causes of hemolysis. Now, when it comes to the hemolytic anemias, you can have intrinsic hemolysis that occur due to problems within the cell. And this can be membrane defects, enzyme deficiencies, and hemoglobinopathies, all of which we have discussed in previous videos. And you can have extrinsic hemolysis that occurs due to problems outside of the cell. Uh, things such as autoimmune hemolytic anemias, microangiopathic and macroangiopathic hemolytic anemias, which we're going to talk about today. Okay, we've already done autoimmune hemolytic anemia in a previous video. You can check that out also in the playlist. And you can have infections. Now, one thing to understand is the reticulocyte count is going to be raised. It's going to be greater than 2%. That's because you are having hemolysis uh, occurring. And when you have hemolysis occurring, your body realizes that you don't have enough red blood cells and it amps up the production of red blood cells. And essentially what ends up happening is that immature red blood cells get released from the bone marrow, leading to an increased reticulocyte count. Now, when it comes to microangiopathic hemolytic anemias, this is an intravascular hemolysis, meaning it's happening within the blood vessels itself, okay, not in the spleen. And it occurs due to red blood cells uh, being destroyed when they pass through small and usually obstructed vessels. So if you have a small vessel like this, and a red blood cell right here passes through this vessel and there's something right here that uh, is obstructing the uh, the flow of the red blood cell what's going to end up happening is this red blood cell is this then become uh, is then going to get lysed okay it's going to get broken up and it's going to get uh, 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 destroyed and that's essentially what is happening usually this ends up damaging the red blood cell and that damage leads to the red blood cell lysing in the circulation uh, due to sharp microthrombi. This can be due to platelets and fibrin aggregates. Okay, all of this can happen because of uh, uh, aggregation of platelets and fib fibrin. And uh, the clot, a micro clot, a microthrombi will then pretty much uh, cut the red blood cell and destroy it. And this essentially, because you are destroying the red blood cell, you're going to have an anemia that's going to be associated with this destruction of the red blood cells. And this, all of this, maha, microangiopathic hemolytic anemias, are associated with conditions like uh, DIC, disseminated intravascular, intravascular coagulation, uh, uh, lupus, TTP, HUS, okay, that's all associated with maha, as well as HELP syndrome, which is uh, uh, something that happens in a pregnant woman where patients will present with microangiopathic hemolytic anemia. So that's the H in hemolysis for help. Uh, increased or elevated liver enzymes right here. So the liver enzymes are going to be elevated. And then low platelets, that's the LP, thrombocytopenia, is also going to be present. That is the HELP syndrome. And you will see uh, microangiopathic hemolytic anemia occurring. Now the peripheral smear, when you look at the peripheral blood smear, you're going to see something called schistocytes. Okay, schistocytes are just lysed red blood cells. And this is what schistocytes look like. As you can see right here, you have some normal red blood cells with central pallor, right? But then you have these weird ass looking things that don't look like any red blood cell. These are the schistocytes, okay? This, these are fragments of red blood cells that have been lysed and they're making these random shapes because of damage to their cell membrane. Like we said, these are fragmented RBCs caused by hemolysis, and they're associated with many different conditions, as well as uh, paroxysmal nocturnal, uh, nocturnal hemoglobinuria. And mechanical hemolysis can also occur due to the prosthetic heart valve. So if someone has a prosthetic heart valve, that valve can actually uh, lead to an anemia because it's lysing those red blood cells. 
Now, you can also have something called macroangiopathic hemolytic anemia. This is also intravascular hemolysis, but the, uh, the difference between this and microangiopathic hemolytic anemia is that the destruction occurs in large usually obstructed vessels instead of small, and the name gives it away, away right? So macroangiopathic compared to microangiopathic hemolytic anemias. This can be associated with the heart valves, uh, lysing red blood cells, like I said earlier, and aortic stenosis. That's the two main things you need to understand. Prosthetic heart valves and aortic stenosis, excuse me, for macroangiopathic hemolytic anemias, very high yield. And this can also be due to higher shearing forces in uh, the bloodstream. Now, the same pathophysiology occurs in macroangiopathic hemolytic anemia as microangiopathic hemolytic anemia. So it's very straightforward, very simple. And it results also in anemia because you are losing red blood cells due to the fact that they are lysing. The peripheral smear is also going to show schistocytes. And that's it. That's microangiopathic and macroangiopathic hemolytic anemias. Pretty much all you need to know. Okay, so with that being said, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. If you guys like what we are doing, you can find us on social media right here. And you can also listen to these lectures on your favorite podcast service provider. Just search Mad Medicine and we'll pop up. Thank you for watching.